clinical thermography is digital infrared imaging that reads off of the sympathetic nervous system. And that's pretty technical, so let me even make that simpler for us to understand. Thermography looks at the physiology or the function of the body, whereas all of the other screening modalities that are available to us, whether it be x-ray, MRI, CT scans, um, ultrasounds, mammograms, they are looking at the anatomy or the structure of the body. So the advantage of thermography is that if we're looking at the function of the body, we are seeing disease or dysfunction happening rather than looking at the anatomy where the disease or the dysfunction has already happened. Does that make sense? So thermography, the, the premise of it or the theory of it was started way back when Hippocrates put mud on sick people and the area of the mud that dried the, the fastest was the area that was diseased or dysfunction. And that is basically what we're looking at here. But what that means today is, because we've got the technology available today, we and the computers and the software and the ability to really read into this, now we can see what does this really mean and what is going on inside our bodies. Okay, so let me talk about some of the examples that we have in our office. All of these images and all of these samples I'm going to talk to you about today are actual case studies from our practice. Okay, so they're not made up stories and they're not stories we got from someone else. They are actually clients of ours. I'll pull up the first image here. This client came in for a full body scan and she had about six months prior to her full body scan, she had extensive dental work done and the dentist said, okay, you're all done, your teeth look beautiful, we'll see you later for your next cleaning. And when she came in for her thermal scan, we could actually see, and I'll point something out that's very interesting in this photo, but we could actually see the infection and the periodontal disease that was in her mouth that did not show up on the dental x-ray because it was so deep and beyond what the x-ray could see. Now, the gradient or the temperature ratings that we're looking for in thermal imaging is white is the hottest. If you can see here on the side of the screen, white is the hottest, then red, orange, yellow, black being the coldest, and purple and blue and green until the gradient comes together. So in this image specifically, you can see the infection in her mouth, and all of that infection is now draining into her lymphatic system. And you can see the inflammation that it's causing in her throat and into the lymphatic system. Drainage of that kind of infection in the lymphatic system could cause heart disease, strokes, and even breast cancer. Here's something interesting I want to point out in this particular photo. If you look at her left ear, she has pierced ears and she had an ear infection. All of us who have pierced ears, you know how every once in a while you get an ear infection and that actually showed up on her thermal scan. And I'm just going to switch around. This particular client came in for a full body scan and she was suffering from severe migraines and nobody could figure out what, the migra what was causing the migraines. Dr. Melvin, who is our primary reading doctor, he took this scan, looked at the images, and he said, this client is suffering from severe whiplash. And she said, you know what? I had a car accident about 13 years ago and I have had migraines ever since and we couldn't get it fixed. We can actually see the whiplash here in the back across between the two shoulders and we can see where the migraines are beginning at the base of the neck and she said that's exactly how my migraines start they start at the base of my neck and work their way up and around so we can actually see the pain and also see the source of the um, disease dysfunction or pain this gentleman came in for a full body scan and Dr. Melvin was able to identify a prostate issue beginning to develop. Now that would have never shown up by way of the PSA tests 
but we can see it developing here on the thermal scan. I'll jump over to this photo. This photo is, um, this lady came in for a breast scan and she chose to have a thermal scan in place of a mammogram to avoid the radiation and the compressions and all the risks that are involved with that. And in this particular thermal scan, Dr. Melvin did say you've got DCIS developing in the left breast. So there's the beginning of actually four little tumors that are beginning to develop in the left breast. I'll show you one more picture and then I'll, I'll let you ask some questions and then we'll continue on, okay? Actually, this is, should I say, this is my business partner, Tina. <laughs> we did a thermal scan on her. She was feeling um, a little upset in her stomach. She was having constipation and um, nausea at the same time. We did a thermal scan on her, and Dr. Melvin said, you've got IBS beginning to develop, which is irritable bowel syndrome. So we were able to clean all of that out, and she's feeling great today. Do we have any questions yet? None yet? Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Here is what Dr. Melvin calls red glove syndrome, and it looks like the client is wearing red gloves. Red glove syndrome is indication of pre-diabetic or pancreatic issues beginning to develop. I'm gonna tell you a quick story. About four and a half years ago, I had a thermal scan done right after my double mastectomy from breast cancer. And I showed up with red palms and the tops of my red hands, or the tops of my hands being red. And I was obviously concerned that I was pre-diabetic. I was drinking soda from the minute I woke up in the morning to the time I went to bed. I would actually take a soda with me to bed and put it on the nightstand just in case I needed it in the middle of the night. Since then, I have totally eliminated the soda. And my scan today, I have beautiful blue, green, purple hands. <laughs> Let's see, this is a client that actually I had just, um, just a few weeks ago. She was a very young girl. She came in for a full body scan, very healthy, worked out, um, ate pretty clean, but she was showing um, some branching in the chest, which was a hormonal imbalance, showing estrogen dominance, progesterone deficient. And Dr. Melvin was able to explain to her what's happening is because her gallbladder, which he outlined on her scan, because her gallbladder was not functioning as it needed to be functioning, it wasn't able to convert that estrogen into bile and naturally eliminate it. So we needed to address the gallbladder issue in order to clean up the estrogen dominance. This beautiful lady came in for a full body scan and the first image that we take when we're doing the cranial study or the head study is the frontal image of the, of the face. And she came in for body scan for all kinds of stuff going on and Dr. Melvin was actually able to identify that there was a skin cancer developing right there on her cheek. And to the eye, the, the naked eye, there was we could see nothing. So, of course, recommended that she go and have that taken care of. This lady came in for a full body scan, and Dr. Melvin said, you are going to have a gallbladder attack, like, very, very soon. He could see that the gallbladder was getting ready to do its, do its dirty. So, Dr. Melvin put her on a gallbladder flush and was able to clean that out. She still has her gallbladder. She didn't have the attack and she's doing wonderful. This gentleman, here's a very interesting one. This gentleman came in, his, actually his wife dragged him in. 
He had been on all kinds of cholesterol medication, heart medication, blood pressure medication, and he was having trouble with his thromboid vein. That vein in his leg was, it was protruding, but now it was beginning to hurt. And he couldn't figure out why it was beginning to hurt. And Dr. Melvin said, this is the same gentleman, that thromboid vein is beginning to hurt because you are beginning to develop a heart blockage. And that's what's <coughs> affecting that vein. And he could attribute, if I had shown you the entire scan, you could see all the way down the leg and how it was directly related to the heart. This was a client that came into my office and she was very, very concerned that she was feeling terrible pain in her stomach, right under her rib cage. And about, she had been feeling this for about 15 years. 12 years ago, she went to the doctor and they took her gallbladder out, because she, I'm sorry, they took her appendix out because they thought it was her appendix. And still having the same pain. About eight years ago, she said, you know, there's something wrong. Now she went to the Mayo Clinic. The Mayo Clinic said, you should have never had your appendix out. <laughs> but um, we are actually going to um, do a partial hysterectomy. They took out one of her ovaries. Of course, that didn't solve the problem either. She came to us, and actually when she walked in the office, I will tell you that she was bent over in pain. And no doctor could figure out what was going on. We could see, actually see the pain on the thermal scan, and Dr. Melvin was able to say, to attribute this, she was having a blockage in her pyloric valves and her pyloric valve and her ileocecal valve, and we needed to open those valves up massage them and get them moving so that her entire digestive system could get moving. Three weeks later, she came in and she has no, no pain and this is completely gone. And of course, unfortunately, she lost her gallbladder because of it, right? And the ovary. And the ovary. This is a 35-year-old woman, she's autistic. She could not speak. Her mother knew that there was something wrong, but of course didn't know what was wrong. Brought her in for a thermal scan, and I will tell you that it was very, very difficult to capture the images because of the autism. It wasn't easy for her to get her to cooperate. But we had Dr. Melvin kind of on standby. So when we captured this image, we sent it to him immediately, and he said, those eye orbitals are telling me there is severe kidney failure. I want you to capture the front and the back so that I can identify and attribute it. And sure enough, she was having severe kidney failure. One of the things that's very, very interesting about thermography, and that's a very blurry and I apologize, so I'll explain it to you, about thermography is because as I introduced, that thermography can see things as it's developing rather than after it's already developed. And let's talk about a breast tumor, for example. When a tumor is developing in the breast, in order for it to show up on a mammogram or even an ultrasound, it has to have been there and developing for at least eight years. We can see it in the thermal scan at two years. So we can see it before it will ever show up on a mammogram or an ultrasound. And that gives us then the opportunity to address what is going on in the host or the body that's causing this to fester and become an issue. And we can address it and make some changes, whether it be in lifestyle, maybe there's a vitamin deficiency, whatever it may be, to address and reverse whatever it is that's developing. So does that mean you won't get breast cancer? In many cases, it means that you will not get the breast cancer, especially in the most common, which is the DCIS, absolutely. And I will tell you, my personal story and how I got involved in thermography. In 2008, I was diagnosed with DCIS, which is ductal carcinoma in situ. It's very, very early stage breast cancer, but it's one of the most um, over-treated type of breast cancers that's out there. 
I was diagnosed with DCIS, it was stage zero, and no lymph nodes were involved. I had a double mastectomy with reconstruction. Had I known about thermography, I would have been able to use thermography, make the change in my lifestyle and my diet, been able to track what improvements were being made, and was I making the improvements, and I probably would still have my breast today. So, the last thing I'm gonna show you is a quick little video of what the experience would be like when you come in for a thermal scan. And this is just a quick little video of what getting a thermal scan is all about. point out a few things for you in the video. There's absolutely no touch, no compressions, no exposure to any radiation. We can see it immediately though we do send it in for reading from the doctor. We go over your report with you, and we send you a copy of your report with all of the images that we take in the scans. So do you do so, the treatment or your doctor does the treatment? Your doctor will do your treatment. We're a clinic that does the actual imaging. My business partner and I were technicians, technically technicians. Can I say that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Technically technicians. <laughs> we take the images, we send them into our reading doctors. Our reading doctors will do their analysis, their studies, their temperature markings. They'll give you their opinions and any recommendations as well. And then you work with your doctor to um, address any issues that are found in the thermal scan. Now here's what's very, very interesting. With thermal imaging, like I had mentioned, there is absolutely no radiation. There's, it's completely safe, not only for us, but for children and the elderly as well. Um, there's no touch, there's no compression, and there's no risk. So let's say that there is something that you're addressing and you're trying to reverse and take care of. You can come in and get a spot image of that particular section of the body and we can actually um, track your prognosis. So you don't have to have a doctor script to go in. Anybody can just come in. Anybody can come in. And you know, I get asked um, often, who should have a thermal scan? And at what point should I have a thermal scan? And my answer to that is, everybody should have a thermal scan. And it is the perfect place to start. It should be your first tool in your toolkit of preventative health or to get a full, you know, a full idea of where you are from a health perspective and then take it from there because it's completely safe and no, no exposure to any radiation. Um, is there an age period, like in your 20s, your 30s, your 50s, or? For the breast health? specifically or for the for whole the, entire body? Mm -hmm. Actually, there is no age. Um, the earlier you start, the earlier you're going to establish your thermal footprint, if you will, and then you can get them every year thereafter, or if there's an issue that you're addressing, then you can, of course, get them more frequently. How often do you find something in children? Not very often. If we do find things in children, it's usually due to poor diet, and it's in the digestive system. So addressing that is, you know, is priority. Unless there's a specific issue. I mean, if there's a specific issue, then we would be able to identify that. Um, I want to also note that thermography was FDA approved in 1982. So since it's been approved, and it was approved as an adjunct to breast, breast health screening or as an adjunct to mammograms and ultrasounds, but now that we've got more than 30 years of history behind us, we're seeing that not only is our technology advanced in those 30 years, but we're also seeing that thermography can be used for the entire body, and there is no risk to it. 
and we're also learning what the risks are in, are involved with you know exposure to radiation compressions and all of that so this is very very early stage health preventative and detection whereas all of the other screening modalities that are available are usually to address something that's already there okay any other questions throw them at me <laughs> so how Go Actually, I'm putting back in on her. So how often do you, what, if how something often, is found? No, well, yeah, it, like what's the percentage of, of the individuals you see end up with something going on? Is it a 50%, 90%? Most, I will tell you that most of us, and it's not because we're bad at taking care of ourselves, but it's because of the environment in which we live in and the food that is available to us, most of us are seeing issues or experiencing issues in our thyroid, our gallbladder, and our digestive system. Um, those are probably the most common. And that those two areas, if you will, are very um, um, impactful on the rest of the health of the body. And it's because our food is, you know, GMO'd and not as clean as we would like it to be. It's very, very processed. And our thyroid, it's because we're, you know, iodine deficient. And the reason we're iodine deficient is because our soils are depleted from minerals and nutrients that we need. And our salt has been, the iodine in our salt has been replaced with bromine. And so our body doesn't really know what to do with bromine and we're we're seeing the indications of suffering from thyroid, from iodine deficiencies. I want to also kind of piggyback a little bit more about how often. Oftentimes, the common um, recommended recall, depending on what is found, Dr. Melvin will recommend that you come back either three months, six months, or a year, depending on what he sees in that scan. Once you establish, though, that footprint, then it's usually every year. Every year. I was going to ask, what are they doing? Um, I, naturopaths are, I, I believe, more well-informed than MDs. What are, what are they doing in this industry to inform MDs of, about demography? Because I got into a debate with my OBGYN years ago, and mammograms just seemed counterintuitive to me and I asked him about thermography and he said no the results aren't reliable enough and you know he was absolutely against thermography so what do they do in the industry to try and inform and well I will tell you that there are more than 800 peer-reviewed medical journals supporting thermography mm -hmm. so the evidence is out there um, it's very, very difficult to educate certain um, individuals in the profession who want to be, um, I don't want to say that. That's okay, I'm married. <laughs> I know, I understand. <laughs> who want to learn only what they learned at the time that they learned it and right. don't want to keep up on mm -hmm. things that we are finding they want to um, stay with what they learned and what has already been found or founded. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It does. Um, this is, isn't new by any means, but it's being newly introduced to the medical community. And so there is a, a certain amount of fear with it, mm -hmm. especially because um, the allopathic medical community is is you know in fear of AMA requirements, mm -hmm. um, AMA violations, and it's very very difficult to balance all of that. I was trying to be as political as I could. I possibly, understand. But yeah. Did I do okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's it's difficult. It's very very difficult. I recently wrote a letter, a, a beautiful letter, to the president of Midwestern University. Now that's, you know, osteopath. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, you know, the in-between. And um, some of the osteopath community are more than, 
you know, welcoming thermography, and others are, you know, are geared more towards the allopath. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's a delicate balance. It's definitely a delicate balance. I have, we have, my partner and I, we have a lot of DOs that refer their clients to us or their patients to us. We have a lot of um, naturopaths that refer their clients and patients to us. And we are beginning to see, yes, we <laughs> are beginning to see um, medical doctors, the allopathic community referring to us, and even more so in the OBGYN mm -hmm. end of it, specifically for the, the purpose of an alternative to mammograms. So there's definitely a, a shift in that paradigm, but it's going to take time. It's definitely going to take time. Are there any areas or any conditions or issues that um, cannot be detected? Yes. Um, because this is thermal, which, mean, which means it's looking at the physiology or the heat that's being radiated by way of cell growth, blood flow, and inflammation, we cannot see through bone. So, we cannot see in the brain. We cannot see behind the pubic bone. Oftentimes, it's a little bit difficult, depending on the condition, for us to see in the lungs because it's protected by way of the rib cage. Um, some conditions we can and some we can't. It all depends on where that, that is in the lungs. But definitely the brain, we cannot see in so the brain. Be. We could see in the knee okay. and around the oh. knee, but we can't see through your knee cap. The caps, okay. But if there's meniscus issues, we can definitely see that. Um, we can see, because it, it will radiate right in that little joint right there. Can I touch you? Yep. <laughs> right there. And we'll, we'll be able to see that. Couldn't you view the knees from the back? Or oh, yes. When we see it from the back, too, we can see it right. I don't mean to bend over. <laughs> <laughs> right here, we can see it, yes. Any other questions? So no, not, no cervical cancer or anything like that? Um, the cervix is very difficult to see, but oftentimes any issues that are happening ab above that um, are going to be showing inflammation and dysfunction. And so we can see um, uterine, ovarian, fallopian, and sometimes cervical, sometimes cervical, depending on the, the issue. Nothing vaginal, though. We wouldn't be able to see anything vaginal. One of the other questions I get a lot, and I'll address it before anybody asks, is what about this in place of a colonoscopy? And no, this does not replace a colonoscopy. And the reason being is because a colonoscopy is going to go in the colon, and the colon is, be, is very short and behind the pubic bone. So we wouldn't be able to see that. But we can definitely see the large and small intestine and that is actually more than what the colonoscopy can see. How about the heart? Yes, we can definitely see issues that are developing with the heart. We can also see um, often what is causing the heart issue. In other words, what's making the heart work harder? Mm -hmm. Or is there anything blocking the heart? Um, oftentimes, our diaphragm and issues with the diaphragm diaphragmic breathing are causing our lymphatic and our blood to flow in the opposite direction that it needs to be flowing and we can see that it's putting pressure and making the heart work harder and because we can see all of that happening we're able to actually work with the client to do you know to kind of reverse that and open it up and get its range of motion going as it needs to be going to help relieve that. Is this covered by insurance normally or no? The Colonial Life covers it 100%. Um, AFLAC covers it. Um, we are seeing small insurance companies through, like unions, for example. There's a Linco um, insurance company, they are covering it. The large companies like United Health, Aetna, um, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, they are beginning 
to develop, I mean to develop, they are beginning to cover it, and what we are finding is our clients are having much better luck of getting reimbursement when they submit the super bill that we give them with a copy of their report, because the report that you get back from the doctor is so comprehensive that it's, it's definitely, you know, supporting it, and the insurance companies are able to see, wow, this is, this is pretty, pretty awesome stuff. Um, I just read a report um, last weekend because I'm putting together a bibliography for John C. Lincoln. They want um, copies of all of, well, they don't want all 800. They want the top 25. So I'm putting together a report for John C. Lincoln. And I just found a brand new report that was um, published just recently that the conclusion of the study was that not only is thermography going to be making its way as, you know, a standard in healthcare, but that um, hospitals and insurance companies are going to be recommending this first before any other screening takes place. So that was encouraging. I mean, there's no proof of that yet, but it's encouraging. We're also hearing, and this is rumor, so I can't confirm it, but we are hearing that the state of California is going to require that insurance companies do cover it next year. And if California does it, then, you know, we're ne else. yeah, we're next like, to follow. Like everything else. Right. <laughs> Which is really, really good news. Really good news. So if the insurance company doesn't cover from this screening, so what is the cost? Okay. The cost is we do many different scans. We can scan all kinds of different things in many different studies. But our three most popular scans are the full body, the half body, and the breast scan. The full body, we do 27 images from the bottom of the feet to the top of the head, front and back. Mm -hmm. It includes, we take the images, it includes us sending them in to the doctor, the doctor doing his reading, analysis, recommendations, and opinions. You get the report back, and it also includes, if you choose, an optional consultation by way of video or telephone, if that's easier. Um, video with the doctor to, for him to explain that to you, and the full body is only 550. Now, if you were to go and have a full body MRI, you'd be paying $3,500, sometimes $7,000, depending. Um, a half body is from the pubic bone up. It's 19 images, same thing. We take it, we send it to the doctor, you get the report, includes a, um, the consultation. That's only 395. And the breast scan is seven images. Now I point out seven images because most breast studies are just six images. We include a seventh image of the full torso because oftentimes the, the host is what's dictating the health of all of the other things going on in our body. And so Dr. Melvin likes to see what's going on you know, internally in the digestive system and our gut health. That is only 250. I had a client um, yesterday or the day before. She said to me, "My last mammogram, I paid seven hundred dollars for." I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Out of pocket. That was crazy. So anyway, those are the three most popular, and then we do variations of that. Let's say that there is something that the doctor sees. And he says, I want you to do this, and Dr. Kadelka wants you to do that, or Dr. Peachy wants you to do this, and then come in and we'll take an image to see how we're progressing. One image, just for the sake of prognosis, is $25. So it's very economical. Very economical. Okay, any other questions? Did I exceed my time limit? <laughs> No. Let. No. No. <laughs> I'm going to pass these out. These are. I did have one last question. Okay. How long does it take? It takes less than an hour. Now, the breast scan, we can take those seven images in 20 minutes. A half body, we can do in about 30 minutes. And we can do a full body in about 40, 45 minutes. But I always schedule an hour 
because we end up talking and you know asking questions and I like to go over what to expect and what not to expect and it takes time for you to get acclimated to the room temperature and the room temperature we have to do this in a room that is between 68 and 72 degrees so your body needs to get acclimated. <laughs> yeah. Your body needs to get acclimated. So we'll chat a little bit while you're getting acclimated, and then and then we'll do the scan. I'm a little shy. Are you standing buck naked in front of the technician, or are they looking at the screen and and just seeing your image in? The well, I'm the face? I'm the technician, <laughs> so you don't have to be afraid. <laughs> so the answer is yes. Yes. <laughs> but you are, we cannot see through clothing, but all of our imaging is done. You can leave your panties on. So we can't see through clothing. You, you can leave your panties on, but. Um, How about Spanx? I'm kidding. No. <laughs> the, the, the smaller the panties, the better. <laughs> I, you know, I've actually seen three, well, four people. Four people completely naked. Maybe they didn't know that they can keep their, their pants, on. pants on. Well, one of them didn't have any pants. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have any on, so that was one of them. The other two were... Um, <laughs> yeah. The other two had on, like, you know, um, compression. And we needed to take those off in order to get the image of the legs. Mm -hmm. But I am usually, the setup in the room is, um, I'm kind of backwards. Okay. Mm -hmm. The setup in the room is, you're over there, and you're standing looking at me, or the wall, or sideways, depending on what image you're taking. And I'm at the computer this way. So it's not very often that I look at you. I'm usually... If I turn, which I'll, I'll turn to focus the camera and get the camera situated, but I'm usually looking at the computer. It's not very often that I'm looking at you. And if I do, it's usually at your face so that I, you're straight on. But other than that, no, I'm not. You, you don't and have how, to how soon thereafter do you have the full report? It takes a week, but let me define a week for you. Dr. Melvin is usually very good about getting it back within five business days. So five business days, give one or two. Mm -hmm. You know, for the breast screening, uh, should I keep my hands in the icy waters? We don't have to do that anymore. No. Okay. This is something, I'm going to brag about this for a minute. Mm -hmm. Our doctors, our, our medical advisor is Dr. Ben Johnson. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that name. He's a very famous um, doctor. He was in the movie um, The Secret. He's written several books. Um, he, the Healing Code. He's written a, the book called Breast um, Breast Health. He was in the eleven part docu series The Truth About Cancer. He was one of the twenty eight doctors interviewed in that docu series. So Dr. Ben Johnson is our medical advisor, and then under Dr. Ben is a whole team of reading doctors, and they all work together. And I keep mentioning Dr. Melvin because Dr. Melvin is the one that I personally have developed a relationship with and he is the one who personally trained me to be the technician. So that's the one I use the most. I'll also say Dr. Melvin's got, of all of the doctors, he's got the most years of experience reading thermal imaging in a clinical setting. He's, do, he's been doing it for almost 30 years now. Yeah. So he's so knowledgeable, and he's so kind and so gentle and all of that. So what kind of doctor is he? Like, what's his title? Well, doctor, let me start with Dr. Okay. Ben Johnson. Dr. Ben Johnson in a, is an MD, an NMD, mm -hmm. a DO, and an integrative oncologist. Holy cow. Yeah, <laughs> he's amazing. And he's pulled together a team from every kind of medical you know, certification and licensing that there is. He, there's a whole team of um, naturopaths and medical doctors, chiropractors, DOs. Dr. Melvin is kind of the one who's laid the groundwork for the thermography, but he started out in chiropractor, okay. in chiropractic, chiropractic, in chiropractic. There we go, chiropractic. <laughs> 
that's where he started. Okay. But that it's been so many years because he's kind of the he's laid the groundwork mm -hmm. for all of this. Now, did I answer your question? Because I think I yes, got distracted. You did. You did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. I I'm just wondering because they're calling. Oh the yes, yes, I was going to brag about that. Yeah. Okay. So. Because Dr. Ben and Dr. Melvin are so committed to thermography and they're so committed to staying ahead of the technology with thermography that they invest, and I'm talking about invest, buku bucks in keeping ahead of the technology, the software, and the hardware so that our pictures are the most crisp and we've got the software and technology now that you, you don't have to put your hands okay. in the water. There are some like clinics that still do that, mm -hmm. he, even here, um, but that's because they have the old technology. They haven't kept up on investing. We have our own software developer mm -hmm. who keeps up on it, mm -hmm. and we don't have to do that anymore. Yeah, right. it's a little chilly in the room, but you know, in Arizona, it feels good. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Where is the facility? We have two facilities. We have one in Scottsdale, and then just this past October, we have one here in Glendale. It's on 59th Avenue, just south of 101. The corner is 59th Avenue and Utopia. We're right across the street from Midwestern University. There's Zips, mm -hmm. a sports grill. We're in building C on the second floor on the back side, so you go in the doors on the back side to go up to the second floor of the professional buildings. We're right above the restaurant Pomo, which used to be Tutti Santi. We're right above them. Are all the doctors based in, in Arizona? Um, Dr. Melvin runs his own practice, in thermography practice, in La Mesa, California. So he's in La Mesa. I, we have our clinic here. We do our we do our dance, we take our images, we send them to Dr. Melvin, and then he sends it back. And then if you wanna have a consultation, which is included, um, we do that by way of video, or which is live, one-on-one. -on -one. He goes over your report with you specifically, answers your questions, or over the phone. And then the one in Scottsdale is where? The one in Scottsdale is Hayden, just south of Shea. Technically, it's Hayden and Morgan Trail and it's in a little um, professional plaza in there. 